my motherfucking story because I hope the lady who tried to press charges on me, I hope she see this. So let me tell you what really happened that night. Let me talk about how much money I lost from this situation. Now I can cry and be serious and cry. There's blood all over the bed, blood all over my pillows, blood all over my sheets. You tried to press charges against me. First of all, how do you press charges with someone who ain't doing nothing? <laughs> As humans, we are innately intrigued by what we consider to be abnormal. It would seem our morbid curiosities tend to get the best of us even in times when it's the least appropriate. Whether we like it or not, everybody loves a good train wreck. You don't have to be a good boy all the time. What better place to observe such catastrophes than social media, which directly enables the very behavior we both condemn and relish. It's almost impossible for us to simply ignore the outlandish, especially when it's entertaining. Just as we are often compelled to turn our heads towards a gruesome accident on the highway, we can't help but gravitate towards the strange and bizarre personalities that occupy our Instagram feeds. A phenomenon that has given prominence to one of the most infamous names on the internet, Lovely Peaches. I want to fuck a man while his wife sits on the other side of the room crying as he eats my delicious pussy in front of her very eyes. Oh, daddy, your wife don't taste this good, does she? Okay, so I actually took this guy virginity yesterday. He's 19 years old. Yes, hello. I was wondering if proactive will work on my genital herpes. <laughs> How does it feel knowing that your first time you caught AIDS? <laughs> Should have stayed a virgin. Let me go. I didn't do anything. Brittany Johnson is a 19 year old social media personality whose rise to fame in 2016 to 2017 can be attributed to the barrage of psychotic acts she broadcast to the internet under the alias Lovely Peaches. Of course, she's had to change her name a couple of times after being suspended for, oh, you know, drinking toilet water. <laughs> Eating poop. Um, I prefer green, green poop other than any other poop. Like when my poop is green, like I cannot even help myself. Making out with the dog. You know, just as you do. If she hasn't rung any bells yet, she's also responsible for the critically acclaimed TikTok single, Itchin' and Burnin'. My pussy be burning, itching, burning, itching. Itching and burning, itching and burning, it be burning and itching, burning and itching. No matter how many baths I take, itching, 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 itching. Yeah, what was once a uh, incoherent Snapchat ramble eventually became one of the most popular sounds on TikTok. As if I'd expect any less from such an app. Itching and burning, itching and burning, 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 burning. Stanky and fishy, stanky and fishy. I got STDs. They make my coochie itch. Itching and burning, itching and burning, itching and burning. Stanky and fishy, stanky and fishy, stanky and fishy. I got STDs. Itching and burning, itching and burning, itching and burning, itching and burning. Stanky and fishy, Don't worry though, her influence reaches far beyond that one song. Because uh, that's not the only one of her Instagram ramblings to be turned into a TikTok trend. We're gonna look at the TikToks and you're gonna get a feel for the PowerPoints. Ever fart on your hand and smell it? Everybody does that. Everybody. I wish like I could cook 
and just like fart on my food and then eat it because it would taste really good. Grab your coochie in three words. Um, itchy, burny, and smelly. So it's funny because it's not, tr I don't know, dude. Like, yeah, I get it. She's weird. She's easy to laugh at, I guess. She gives these kids something to latch on to, and that can only remain harmless for so long. Because it's this type of public aggrandizing that perpetuates oh whatever God. mental problems may already be there. Um, it basically depends on a price, um, how much they're gonna charge me for a feature. Um, Annie Frank, I mean, she's pretty famous, so who knows how much she's gonna charge me. I wish I could sit here and easily tell you where she came from and how long she's been around, but truthfully, nobody knows the answer to that. The history of Lovely Peaches is almost as much of a mystery as her obsession with human feces. According to her, though, she's been running away from home since age 15 and appears to have been motel hopping since. And after poking around a bit, I was able to find what looks to be an old YouTube channel dating almost four years back, which I assume was one of her first official social media outlets, where only a handful of videos are currently listed, including such titles as my first video, and that's my favorite part. followed by I deleted all of my social media, I've decided I'm better off dead, and finally, I should have done this a long time ago. <sighs> I'm tired of being bullied and people making up things about me. A response to online bullying that I guess didn't last long since she posted this the next day. I got a very stinky pussy, 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 a very stinky pussy. So it's hard to get a read on her. My really sexy and incredibly hot friend Primink covered Lovely Peaches on his channel last year where he did bring up a pretty good point. Peaches entire internet presence seems to revolve around two types of content. One that consists of pretty harmless yet still ridiculous types of troll videos where she just kind of acts dumb and messes with people and another that isn't that kind of like this and i was like hello are you there <laughs> are you there um but he's in heaven now <laughs> If you ask me, there's a pretty considerable difference between pretending to act stupid in a Q&A and flashing your vagina at a kid on Instagram Live. I mean, this is a woman who constantly posts videos of her sexual encounters with men, streams herself sucking dick, even hooking up with married men. But I get, I, I get that's a lot. So, uh, you yeah, know, we'll get into that in a little bit. Because when I went down this rabbit hole, I wanted to know, how did Peaches even get to this point? Why was she followed and supported by by so many huge influencers on social media. What caused this? Well, I have to say, it's pretty simple when you boil it down. Kids. Yeah, it, obviously. What, what do you think? It's no secret that kids are not hard to entertain. Like, you show them something insane, like a woman trying to fight her alter ego on camera, and they're probably gonna want more. Like a moth attracted to a bug light, they can't get enough of what will probably hurt them in the long run. Before she went completely viral on TikTok, Peaches was no stranger amongst Stan Twitter, thanks to her reaction memes and, I guess, just overall bizarre reputation. Plus, she's a barb, so yeah, that, that probably helped. Nikki is the queen, and she always will be. I don't know why you hating on her. She the queen of rap. <laughs> and she was funny. She could never be replaced. Queen, queen Latifah, the queen of rap, baby. Who? You have to admit, it is a pretty impressive feat to maintain such a massive audience for so long despite all of her account terminations. She posts all the time, mostly with the same song. The same song. Uh, just all of her TikToks. The same, same song. <laughs>
The fact that she was able to get so big off of this really is a testament to not only her own entertainment value, but also the type of audience we're dealing with here. She's even used her reputation to launch a seemingly legitimate music career in the same vein as Woe Vicky or Lil Tay. If I wasn't so concerned for her mental state, I'd say it was genuinely well played. I mean, her voice is actually pretty good. But I'm afraid there are some deeper layers to Lovely Peaches that are just too glaring to go unrecognized. On March 1st of 2018, when Peaches was just 17 years old, she had a child named Cora Miracle. Hi guys. Well, I'm in my third trimester now. Only three more months. Now at this point, Peaches had already established a pretty sizable reputation. She had a name for herself. So as you could imagine, an audience of a couple hundred thousand people were pretty thrilled upon hearing the news. And just like any young mother, the birth of her child fundamentally impacted her life on an unmeasurable scale. Just yeah, n not in the way that you would think. Peaches loves ya. But before we get into this tale of wonder, we do have a sponsor, Raycon. This is definitely not the first time I've mentioned Raycon in a video, but that's because I think their earbuds are genuinely good. I, I wouldn't keep pushing them if I thought otherwise, I actually like them. Especially because they start at around half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, yet they still sound just as great as any other top brand you know. They're good for exercising and working from home, even listening to podcasts like Susan's Boy is hosted by The Right Opinion and myself. With its six hours of playtime, a seamless Bluetooth pairing, bodacious colors, quality bass, and a sleek, compact design that gives a nice noise-isolating fit. Click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order. Huge thanks again to the lovely people at Raycon for helping me out during these trying times. Speaking of trying, let's see Lovely Peaches try and pull off the biggest and most controversial lie of her career hello good morning um i don't really feel like this video needs that much of an introduction i just want to talk about a few things and i made this page specifically for that issue now this youtube channel will be based off of the story of core miracle and what really happened to her a lot of assumptions were made up about the situation you know people they just assume things and they run with it it didn't take long for Peach's language towards her infant daughter to become more and more unusual, drifting into rather distressing waters pretty quickly. I don't care what nobody says. Nobody can tell me how I should treat my child. You know why? Because she's mine. And I brought her into this world. And I hope she sees this too. I brought you into this world, ho. She's a dick sucking ho. All she do is get fucked all motherfucking day. She's a ho ho. I love to watch my baby girl get fucked in her pussy. Getting fucked hard and getting raped by grown men. Now, if you haven't noticed, Lovely Peaches is a very erratic, unpredictable individual whose intentions can oftentimes be difficult to interpret. You never really know when she's being sincere, so some of her fans found it fairly easy to disregard the many threats against Cora's life. But with a sense of apathy came a level of genuine concern as Peaches began making physical threats against her daughter on a regular basis. I ate your fucking play man i'm your fucking mother bitch i don't care that you two years old bitch i will fucking kill you in this fucking room bitch don't fucking play with me like that i told that hoe i told her hoe she don't respond to me i was gonna bop her on her shit and i did i punched that hoe on her fucking eye i got time for this hoe according to countless videos streams instagram captions peaches was said to have admitted to licking her daughter's genitals in addition to slapping and throwing her against the wall i'm about to cut my <laughs> I would cut my baby's neck. <laughs> Amidst further calls of Peaches discussing the prostitution of her one-year-old child, leaving many onlookers beside themselves. Well, she she has to be a virgin. Is she a virgin? Um, no, she's not a virgin. Well, how many times has she done this before? Um, she first lost her virginity at four months. I would say she had sex at least. Maybe about five times in her life. That's perfect. Okay. 
Even if this was all just an elaborate joke, the graphic nature of what was being depicted was enough to elevate mild concern into full-on outrage. And rightfully so. Fans began frantically contacting CPS as Instagram celebrities began raising awareness around social media with the help of YouTubers like Jacqueline Hill and Candy Johnson. It wasn't until then that the police were notified and subsequently confirmed to the masses that Cora Miracle was never in any danger at all. In fact, it was revealed that Peaches didn't even have custody of her daughter, who was remaining under the watchful eye of her grandfather, safe and sound. When she was like a month and a half old, she was constantly flirting with my boyfriend and she did it for literally months like he would change her diaper she would be flirting with him and it was at this point that we discovered peaches had run away from home early 2018 her whereabouts unknown to her family who were said to have little to no internet access with this information in mind another piece of the puzzle seemed to fit right into place with her daughter staying the same age throughout many months of instagram posts something was clearly out of the ordinary with peaches herself Herself cycling through only a handful of images she had evidently taken before running away from home. She never had access to her child after abandoning her, yet that's clearly not what she wanted people to believe. But was she insane or trying to manipulate her fans for clout? Truthfully, I don't know if the answer is that simple. Peaches is absolutely an attention seeker. I mean, I'd say it's pretty obvious that she enjoys all publicity, whether that be negative or otherwise. But when we take a closer look, Look. We recognize the hollowed out shell of a desperate individual practically screaming for help. Peaches comes from an unfortunate background, one that we don't particularly know a lot about, but I feel like the clues presented over the past couple years paint a rather dark picture. One that depicts lovely Peaches not as an insane monster, but rather a victim of circumstances beyond her control. Okay, let's just take a moment to celebrate me. Okay, so I ran away. Sunday will be a month. This is my eighth time running away. I start running away at 13. I run away at 13, 14, 15, two times at 16. And I think this is my, I'm 17 now and I, 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 I can't even keep up with all the times that I'm running away, but it's been eight times. Um, anyways, coming up will be a month that I've been missing this time and I'm pretty excited. I'm going to throw a little party or whatever. Of course, that's not to excuse any of the heinous things she's done on camera, but it does provide at least a little bit of an explanation. From what we know, her mother committed suicide when Peaches was just 15 years old, roughly around the same time she was running away from home. Based off evidence uploaded to her social media, as well as loose retellings from Peaches herself, it was during her late teens that she allegedly fell victim to sex trafficking. There are signs from education to occupation that suggests she comes from a very rough home. Long story short, Lovely Peaches was basically recently assaulted, so she claimed that she was assaulted. There was a site that said that she was a 17-year-old prostitute. As he booked her to, you know, have his way with her, he then brought two more men in the room, and as those two more men came in the room, it was three of them, they came in, ran up on her, assaulted her, and she even posted like stuff on her story after it happened. We don't know the full extent to which she could have been exploited through human trafficking, but I do suspect there was something there, since she didn't become a prostitute until after she escaped. Or, I say prostitute, if she was underage, then it'd just be rape. But we don't have enough of a concrete timeline here to prove anything. As evident by her testimony from 2019, Peaches was assaulted by several pimps in what she thought was meant to be a standard session with a client. I was sex trafficked around January. Um, most of y'all already remember that story, but long story short, um, they're pimps and they pimp out a lot of young girls. Most of their girls are young girls like me who don't really have a place to go. I was homeless for a while. I got away from them and I helped someone else get away as well. Anyways, I did a video on what was going on and how I was being sex trafficked and abused and things of that nature. I can only assume these men who were involved with sex trafficking were aware of her internet presence and were able to track her whereabouts accordingly. She was quick to vent about the alleged encounter moments after it occurred on Instagram Live. <laughs> You know, you go through things, you cry about it, and um, 
yeah, I got my ass beat and I'm feeling better now, you know? Human trafficking generates an estimate of about $150 billion per year on a global scale, making Peaches one of around a million girls who fall victim to such a demented fate on an annual basis. The targets of this industry tend to be women who come from poverty-stricken backgrounds, those with no one to look after them are subsequently sold into prostitution, marriage, or forced labor, with over half of reported cases from 2018 involving minors. This is an issue that transpires geographical boundaries. It's a problem that can be found in just about every country on the planet, across an abundance of states and counties, proving once more that this sick lifestyle is far from exclusive to lovely peaches. She just happens to have a massive audience in addition to that. A barrage of corporate sponsorships and endorsements hardly work to remedy the situation. Yeah, she's a terrible person to look up to. She doesn't deserve the influence she has, but because she's pulling enough numbers, companies are willing to pay for promo. Just as Peaches has taken advantage of fans to promote her abhorrent content, Peaches herself has been taken advantage of by a system that actively works to keep her down. As much as she's a troll, she's also a victim. And although I do feel for her situation, we shouldn't let our sympathy blind us from the fact that she is still a mentally unwell person roaming freely across social media and the real world alike. Hi, Vicky! Hi, bitches! Why? Why are you at Malu's house? I'm a huge fan. Can you please tell her to come home as soon as possible? <laughs> let me see. Let me see you. Let me see your face. I'm in the back because security kept passing by. You need to get away from Malu, bro. <laughs> Bro, bro, how did you even get the address? Um, on the internet, I got it from Bad Baby. God, Milo's shirt. It so good. Hey, you need to beat that bitch ass. You need to beat Bad Baby's ass. Girl, I don't like that bitch. We gon' you gonna beat her ass? <laughs> I would love to, girl. We got to pull up on that bitch. Police have already been notified. She will be arrested once she's caught. I wasn't coming as a fan. I was coming to whoop that whole ass for talking about the queen of rap, okay? Um, I don't know why the other house she went to had her on camera and didn't notify their security. I can't answer that. But she will be held accountable for what she did. You better hide. You better lock the motherfucking doors. Cause we on our way back, bitch. It ain't no fake shit this time. Peaches loves ya. Okay, but don't come to my house to take a picture outside my house if you don't know me. I love you. Girl, you need to go to the hospital. You need to check yourself, bitch. You need to put some cables on your head, bro. I don't know what the fuck going on. <laughs> You may find it easy to laugh at Peaches, it's understandable at first glance, though the deeper you delve, the more depressing her story becomes. On one hand, this is a woman who is in clear need of mental assistance. She shouldn't be trusted to roam the streets unsupervised, let alone carry the heavy burden that comes with being as famed as she is. Whether she's receiving praise or criticism, she's getting exactly what she wants, which is the grand conundrum of this entire situation. 
reason. We can't just ignore a party so chaotic and unstable in nature with an audience of 700,000 followers. That's just not feasible at this time. The people in her life can only do so much to guide her in whatever they think is the right direction, while onlookers like us can only judge and observe whatever she puts on the internet. Lovely Peaches will be commended, mocked, and criticized for as long as she's cashing in on public shock value. But above all else, I am afraid the direness of her circumstances will be downplayed by her fans for the remainder of her online presence. Hopelessly tormented by an audience responsible for the attention she can't seem to live without. Keep on, keep on.